What's up guys, my name is Crosby and I am so stoked about today's topic. I've been wanting to make some more digital nomad videos for a while. If you're new here for some context, I have been a digital nomad for the last three years as a freelancer and content creator traveling the world both in the US in an RV and a Jeep and also out of the country backpacking through Latin America and currently in Spain. A lot of my videos on my channel are kind of showing the lifestyle, showing what it's like to be a digital nomad in various parts of the world. I want to start making more videos about how I got into it and how you can as well because I am a huge proponent of this lifestyle and I truly believe that 2022 is the best time in human history to not only become a remote worker but also to become a digital nomad. So before we jump into the nitty gritty of how to become a digital nomad and where to start, a little bit of background about me is that I became a freelancer in 2019 as a full-time college student. If you want to know all of the details of my background, watch this video. I made it about a year ago and it really details how I went from full-time college student working towards an agency job to full-time freelancer and content creators. The main ways that I have made money online so far is through freelancing. My niche and my specialty is social media and branding strategy for executives. So CEOs, CMOs, people who may not have a lot of knowledge about how to enhance their online presence or to simply don't have time. That is where I come in and I help them with their LinkedIn or their Instagram, stuff like that. I also do content creation here on YouTube as well as Instagram. I do occasional brand partnerships and I also make money here on YouTube through ad revenue. I make some money through affiliate marketing on YouTube, Instagram, and my blog. I've also made money through one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I've kind of taken a step back because I just simply do not have the time for that right now. But coaching is another way that I've made money as well as selling digital products. My main product right now is my prepare to launch ebook, which I'll talk a little bit more about in this video because it's quite relevant, but I made you know a decent amount from that as well. So a high level definition of what a digital nomad is, is someone who can work remotely in various locations of their choosing. So whether you want to work from home in the United States, or in your home country, or whether you want to work from a co-working space in Medellin, Colombia, or a cafe in Sevilla, Spain, where I'm currently filming this, you have the freedom to do that. And over the last year or so, it has been wild to see the number of digital nomads increasing all over the world. And this is obviously due to the major uptick in remote work due to the pandemic and people kind of realizing that they can do their job that they were once doing in an office from anywhere in the world or at least just remotely. That realization has sparked a massive uptick in digital nomadism. For example, in the US alone, we are now seeing just last year, 15 and a half million digital nomads, which increased from 7.3 million back in 2019. So that is a huge jump that we've seen over the last couple years. And it's only increasing as places around the world are kind of realizing that this movement is real. And they're making improvements in the infrastructure, cafes, co-working spaces, Airbnbs, making sure there's fast, reliable internet, making sure there's good working environments to attract these digital nomads to their cities. Now, the primary requirements to become a digital nomad or to work successfully as a digital nomad are four key things. Number one is obviously to have a remote source of income or multiple sources of remote income. We're going to touch on the main sources of remote income that you can look into in the next section of this video. But in addition to that, you need sufficient tools and technology. So for some people, you may just need a laptop and charging equipment and stuff like that, maybe a headset for calls. Or if you are in the photography and videography space like me, I have in addition to my laptop, my camera, my drone, a good quality microphone, tons of batteries, all of that type of thing. So it just depends on your job. The third thing that is a non-negotiable is a strong internet connection. So depending on your job, you may need this at all hours of the day, every single day. Or if you make your own hours or if you have your own business, you may be a little bit more flexible with how often you are connected to the internet, but that is a must and something that you will have to prioritize when you start traveling with your laptop and with your work. And then the fourth requirement to have is a productive working environment. So, you know, you can have a strong internet connection, you can have the tools and technology all day, but if you're sitting in a cafe that is blaring loud music or you're at a hostel where there is parties every day and it's just an extremely unproductive place to work, you're not gonna be as successful. So those are all of the things that you really need to prioritize as a digital nomad. Now probably the biggest question I get in terms of how to become a digital nomad is where to start. Obviously this makes sense, it's extremely overwhelming. You know, this lifestyle seems very much like a dream and kind of effortless a lot of the times portrayed on social media, but the truth is it is not. It's taken me years to get to where I am and I'm still very much on the journey to creating my own online source of income, creating more freedom and flexibility in my life. And this is the case for most digital nomads as well. It is a journey and it's not gonna happen overnight. That's the first thing you have to realize. So you need to preface that beforehand and realize that it is going to take a crap ton of work and a lot of 
time and effort and you know feeling like you don't know what the heck you're doing because again this whole digital nomad thing is very new and there is no formula there's no set playbook for how to be successful you just have to want it bad enough and know your why so this kind of leads me into where to start as an aspiring digital nomad and that is to not focus on the work right away as counterintuitive as that sounds the first thing that you think about should not be oh how am I gonna make a bunch of money online the first thing you need to think about is why do I want to become a digital nomad at all so you really want to define this very specifically not just oh I want to travel oh I want to have more freedom for example if you want to become a digital nomad so that you can make your own hours have the freedom to work from anywhere in the world then freelancing or owning your own online business may be the best route for you because it will provide you with more flexibility in terms of time and location on the other hand if you want to become a digital nomad simply so you can work from home or maybe hop to a different city to visit some family while still working and you want to maintain you know the health care and retirement benefits of a nine-to-five job then a remote nine-to-five might be best for you so for me I knew that I really wanted to be able to travel internationally I wanted to make my own hours I wanted to be able to choose who I worked with and kind of feel like I had a lot of autonomy over my career so I went into freelancing because that gives you a lot more flexibility than a remote nine to five will in a lot of different ways um, obviously there are a lot of difficulties that come with that you know I'm responsible for all of my taxes my health care my retirement all of that but to me it's worth it because I'm able to you know hop from country to country be in different time zones um, set my own rates work with whoever I want that type of thing so you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons that's really what it is so in order to become a digital nomad you have to first become location independent and basically this is a lifestyle that does not tie you or require you to reside in one specific geographic location and obviously to do this you have to be able to earn a remote income lucky for you 2022 is the best year in human history to become a remote worker it is wild the statistics we're seeing and obviously the pandemic expedited this by at least a decade as of this year 31 percent of the world's workforce is is remote. This is a massive uptick from 2019 where 17% of the world's workforce was remote. So as more and more people go remote, more and more people are realizing that they can do it from wherever, which is really cool. And because of this massive trend, companies across every industry are taking note and are making changes to make sure that they are adapting to this change. We've all kind of heard about the great resignation. And the thing is, people aren't resigning because they just simply don't want to work. People are resigning because they are searching for better options. They know that they can do their job successfully in a remote environment and they are not going to stop until they find that perfect fit that will allow them to live that freeing lifestyle that they want to live a big misconception about remote working and digital nomadism is that it's only possible for a certain number of industries so marketing social media IT software engineering obviously those are based online and kind of always have been so of course this is a huge part of the remote world but the truth is jobs in almost every Every industry are increasing massively on a remote scale from finance to education legal healthcare, project management virtual assistance something I hear a lot of the times from people is maybe someone who has a healthcare background or a legal background who really wants to become a digital nomad thinks that they have to learn an entirely new skill set to become a remote worker and that's just simply not the case will you have to learn some new skills probably but I never recommend switching entirely from one field to the other because you think there's just no jobs so stick to what you know and I promise you there will be opportunities in your field that are if not available now will be quite soon now let's jump into the most common ways to earn a remote income and we're gonna start with a remote nine-to-five another very common misconception about digital nomadism is that you have to have your own business to be successful and travel the world and that's simply not true I've met nomads in Mexico Colombia Peru Costa Rica Puerto Rico Spain and there are so many people that are working remote nine-to-fives so if you're someone who wants to work remotely and be a digital nomad but still maintain kind of a more tight structure maybe Maybe you like working those hours maybe you like to have those weekly check-ins and have the benefits you know health care retirement all of that working around nine to five might be your best bet you just have to make sure that you're sticking to those hours and if you decide to go somewhere with a different time zone you have to be prepared to accommodate for that it's also extremely important to note that 95% of remote nine to fives 
do have a geographic restriction, whether that is a city, a state, a country, or a geographic region. So for example, Europe or Eastern Standard Time or something like that. I strongly believe that this percentage is starting to go down, but if you are someone who wants to be a digital nomad and travel to different countries of your choosing, then you need to be prepared to either seek out that 5% of remote jobs that do not have a geographic restriction, or you need to be ready to negotiate with your existing employer or your future employer about working from a different country. Now, of course, there are lots of remote job sites that I will list right Right after this to find remote jobs but my number one tip for finding a remote job that will allow you to work from anywhere in the world is to look for remote first companies remote first companies are companies where remote work is embedded into the ethos into the mission of this company most of these companies did not start in an office and then go remote out of necessity they were created with the objective and with the mission to be remote and to allow their employees to have the freedom to live and work anywhere in the world typically they will have benefits on top of the normal healthcare and stuff like that, specifically for remote workers. So some have a home office budget or a co-working stipend. A lot of them will have team retreats every year or every quarter. Most of them will also have a technology budget for you to make sure that you have enough technology and the correct tools to execute your job from anywhere in the world. And a lot of them have the policy of, you know, if you message someone, you can expect a response in two seconds because people are working from different time zones all around the world. There are tons of companies out there that are remote first and there are more and more that are actually becoming remote first. So Dropbox actually announced that they are officially a virtual first company, which is really exciting and a trend that I think we are going to see more and more of as this remote work trend continues to explode. Now let's talk about remote job sites to find different opportunities. So a few remote job sites that you can look into are flex jobs. That is my number one recommendation for a remote job site. We work remotely, remote.co, dynamite jobs, working nomads, go and start doing your research. Again, if you're not ready to start applying, that's totally fine, but it will give you a really good sense of what's out there and it may start to get you a little bit more excited and inspire you to start taking action. Now, the second main way to earn a remote income is through freelancing and freelancing is basically working for a company or an individual on a contractual basis. As a freelancer, you create your own rates, you make your own hours and you choose who you work with because you're the one pitching to these prospective clients. You can structure your rates in three main ways. Number one, is hourly, which I only recommend in the beginning because you don't, at the end of the day, want to be trading your time for money, but it's usually where freelancers begin. You can also do project fees. So if you're doing a one-off project for them, maybe you're revamping their website or you're creating a social media strategy for them, you can create a project fee for that. Or, and this is kind of the ideal scenario, is you set up a monthly retainer with them. Basically what this means is you have a set agreed upon list of responsibilities that you are supposed to attend to every month and they will pay you a set amount that you agree on every month. If you go over, you'll typically have an hourly rate that they will pay you on top of that retainer. But this is ideal because once you have a specific amount coming in every month, you can start to budget way easier. You can put stuff aside way easier and you can plan ahead a lot easier than you would be if you're just doing an hourly rate and those hours fluctuate or you're only doing project fees. So at the end of the day, a monthly retainer and establishing those long-term relationships with clients is absolutely ideal. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is my primary source of income is freelancing. And at the moment, I only have one client Client, and I just do that because I have a very, very good relationship with them. I'm on retainer with them, so I get a set amount every single month. And we have a great relationship, like I mentioned, so I'm able to travel the world. They honestly love it. We jump on our weekly client calls and they're like, where in the world is Crosby today? So as long as I'm able to make the time change work, it's totally fine and very flexible. So yeah, the freelancing is kind of a means to an end for me. It's the way for me to support my life of travel at the moment. And in terms of finding freelance opportunities, of course, you can find opportunities actually on Flex Jobs and LinkedIn as well as the typical freelancing platforms Upwork and Fiverr. Personally, I have not found success through any of this. My number one way that I have gotten clients, literally every single client has been through either networking or word of mouth. So in the very beginning, networking is the number one way that I was able to get my name out there and have people take a chance on me. Even posting on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram that you have a freelance business, what your skills are, what your capabilities are, and who your ideal clients are, who you can help. I understand that it is gonna feel a little weird, a little awkward, a little self promo -y, but it's 100% necessary and it will help you in the long run. So just try and put your pride aside and start posting on social media, sending out emails, reconnecting with old employers or colleagues, or again, family, friends, 
my first client was a family friend. So if you're a brand new beginner and you're like, I have no freaking idea how I'm gonna get my first client, you need to put your pride aside and just reach out anyways and let them know, you know, this is what I'm doing. It may not even be that you wanna work with them. But maybe they know a perfect client for you in your industry that you've never even spoken to and they can put in a good word and maybe that person will reach out. This has happened to me multiple times. You know, one time, another way that I got a client was in college. I told my career counselor what I was doing, um, you know, who I was trying to help, what my skills were, etc. And within an hour of meeting with them, he sent out an email to me and said, hey, I had someone literally just reach out. She works for a local service organization and they need help with their online presence, their website, and their social media. And from there, I was able to make several thousand dollars just through that deal. And it was literally just through telling someone who knew a person. So again, networking is your best friend. And like I mentioned earlier, I do have an ebook called Prepare to Launch, where I lay out everything you need to know, the roadmap to getting a remote nine to five or becoming a freelancer. And I have an entire section about networking, about how to enhance your LinkedIn profile to attract potential clients or potential employers. So if you're serious about becoming a digital nomad and becoming a remote worker, I highly recommend checking out my ebook. The link is in the description, it is currently 20% off. And the third main way to earn a remote income is by owning your online business. This is probably probably the most challenging way to earn a remote income, but by far the most freeing at the end of the day. And of course there are hundreds, if not thousands of different business ideas that you can come up with, whether it's coaching, consulting, blogging, drop shipping, starting your own online store, selling digital products like eBooks or courses, being a content creator on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or whatever. There are so many ways that you can earn a remote income through starting your online business. And the ultimate goal here by starting your own online business is to eventually have it sort of run on autopilot, whether that be through hiring people to do certain tasks or by setting up really smart technological systems. Because at the end of the day, start Starting your own online business and running that online business by yourself is extremely time consuming. So you want to start setting up systems in place that will allow you to earn passive streams of income as soon as possible so that you're able to have more freedom over your location and time. And obviously this takes years to set these systems in place. So for the first few years, you're going to be grinding, you're going to be working way more hours than you would at a traditional nine to five. You're not going to probably be making a lot of money off the bat. And if you are, it's going to take a lot of time for you to separate yourself from the business so that you're not trading time for money. I'm in that stage right now and I can tell you it is a lot of effort, a lot of time, but it's incredibly worth it to me because I know in the long term it's gonna benefit me that I'm going to have the ultimate freedom in a few years from now to really be able to have a sustainable source of income with very little time and effort on my part. It just takes that kind of initial grind, basically. I always tell people, once you start working online, if this is kind of your first remote job or a new remote job, I never recommend to, oh, I got the job, now I can start traveling. Never, I never recommend doing that because it takes time to get your systems in place, to understand the company and how it works so that you can really make a smart calculated decision of where you can travel to, what type of travel is most realistic for you. You're not gonna know that until you've worked with a company or freelanced for at least a few months. The last thing you want is to start working remotely and immediately start traveling and then realize that you're in over your head and your work quality starts to decline and the worst thing that could happen is that you lose a client or you lose the job and then you're back to square one. This is not gonna happen overnight. This is gonna take a lot of time for you to get comfortable in your remote job. And then the next step, which is its own beast and something I'm gonna cover in a future video because we'd be here forever, how to choose the right destination, the right environment for you to work for, how long you wanna stay in each location, how fast you wanna travel around or whether you wanna stay somewhere for six months to a year at a time. All of these things are extremely dependent on you, your preferences, your lifestyle, what you designed in the beginning before you even started looking at remote jobs, as well as the job itself. What can you realistically do long term? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe because these are the types of things I'm going to start discussing in future videos if you enjoyed this one. There are so many things that go into making this lifestyle possible 
enjoyable and sustainable long term that I really am excited to discuss with you because again I absolutely love this lifestyle and I'm extremely passionate about helping others achieve it but yeah I just always have to make it clear that it's not easy and it's not something that's gonna happen overnight I would love to hear any questions that you have about this in the comments below so please comment whatever questions you have that you want to see a future video on and I will try and get to that ASAP yeah thank you so much for watching and of course as always I will see you in the next one bye